Now, how do we get polarized light? Well, we use a polarization filter. We use something that only allows the electric fields through in a certain direction. We use something that only allows electric fields through in a certain direction. So we could draw what are the directions that the polarizer allows. So maybe here we have a polarizer that only allows up-down. So if this is the original unpolarized light, and you pass it through an up-down polarizer, after it passes through the polarizer, only these oscillations will still be around. So this would be the after picture. Um, so when we talk about the polarizer, again, we're focusing on what types of electric fields it lets through. This would obviously let through magnetic fields that look like this, but we won't talk about that. OK, so that's how a polarizer works. The example people oftentimes give is, imagine I had a rope in my hand, and the other end of the rope is attached to the wall. Well, I could send all kinds of waves through that. If I shook my hand up and down, that would send up and down waves. And if I shook my hand from side to side, that would send horizontal waves. But then, let, um, so that would be unpolarized, because I'm constantly sending through both types of vibrations. On the other hand, suppose then that I build a picket fence. You know, a picket fence has vertical slats, and I run the rope through the slats. Well, the picket fence is like a polarizer, because when I shoot my hand up and down, the picket fence will allow those up and down oscillations through. But then when I feel like uh, waving my hand from left to right, the picket fence won't let, let, won't let that through. So on my side of the picket fence, the wave will look like it has oscillations in all directions. On my side of the picket fence, you'll see up-down oscillations and left-right oscillations and diagonal oscillations and whatever types of oscillations I put in. But if you look at the rope on the far side of the picket fence, you're only going to see the up-down oscillations because it's a polarizer. It only lets those through. So that's a rough analogy for how a light polarizer works. It's like a picket fence that has all its slats running in one direction. So even though the, the initially the oscillations are in all directions, it only lets one type through. Okay, uh, so then that would give us uh, like this polarized, uh, like this. On the other hand, you could use a different type of polarizer. Suppose you use a northeast-southeast polarizer. Well, if you start with unpolarized light and you shoot it through a northeast-southeast polarizer, then at, um, the light after it gets through the polarizer would look like this. It would basically be oscillating in the same direction as the polarizer. Very simple. Just like if you run the rope through the picket fence, it ends up oscillating in the same direction that the slats are oriented in the picket fence. So uh, let's see here, why would you ever want to uh, polarize light? So here's one important application. Do you remember from organic chemistry, we saw that chiral molecules rotate light? Oh, plane polarized. But they only rotate plane polarized light. So for example, let's say that you take this light and you put it through a chiral molecule. Let's say you rotate this through a chiral molecule. Well, then afterwards, it might look like this. It's been rotated from here to here. So now, this is the before picture. And this is the after picture. Basically, a chiral, uh, yeah, so the chiral molecule has rotated the light in a particular direction over here. Uh, and you can measure that. So no chiral molecules rotate light. Now, why don't chiral molecules rotate unpolarized light? Well, they do, but you can't tell because if all the oscillations are rotating, then you still have oscillations in every direction. Yeah, I never knew what it really meant when they were talking about the plane polarizer.
So for example, let's say we take this unpolarized light and we run it through this polarizer. Well, you can see what this polarizer does is it takes everything and rotates it 45 degrees. It doesn't have to be 45 degrees, it could be anything, but this is rotating 45 degrees. Well, the unpolarized light would get rotated 45 degrees, but you couldn't tell because there would still be oscillations in every direction. E1 would now be pointing northeast and southwest, and E2 would now be horizontal, and E3 would now be diagonal, and E4 would now be up and down, but these aren't labeled in, in actual physical space. You won't be able, all, you, all you'll know is that the original light had oscillations in all directions, and the new light has oscillations in all directions. So um, it's not interesting to do the experiment with a chiral molecule and unpolarized light because you can't see the rotation. But if you only start with one oscillation and it rotates, then you can see that it got rotated. Okay, so that's one important application. If you want to see the rotation of light, you have to start with only one oscillation so you can see it rotating. Okay, so um, that's one, uh, one application of uh, polarization. All right, so the way this is likely to be tested is they're likely to ask, what's the effect of different polarizers on the light? So let's look at some examples. Just the cosine squared thing. Right. Which is for the, I guess we'll get to it. So let's do some examples. So let's say that we already have started with polarized light. We're starting with light that's already polarized, and then uh, so it's probably already gone through a polarizer. And now we run it through another polarizer. We want to ask how is it going to be affected? So how would this light be affected by this polarizer? Uh, well, the answer is it won't, because the polarizer is going to let all of these oscillations through. It's like if I was only shaking the rope vertically, and I ran it through a vertical fence, the fence would have no effect. So there's no effect in this case if the polarizer is in the same direction the light was already polarized. Okay, so let's do a more interesting case. Let's say this is the polarizer. Nothing is there. Yeah, now you get nothing through, so we can show that with a dot, no oscillations. And again, you can see that with the picket fence. If I was only shaking my hand from left to right, but the fence flaps were vertical, nothing would get through because it only lets up and down through, and I'm not doing any up and down. All right, but these are both too easy. How about if the polarizer looks like this? This is the hard case. So let in, so let in like the, the horizontal component of that line. Ah, oh, looks like you're starting to think like a physicist. <laughs> Very good. That shows, them, that shows that the, the class is sinking in. That's right. Because most people look at this, most people look at this and they say, oh, the light is polarized up down, and this is not up down, so none of it will get through. The, the normal, ordinary person answer is that the answer should be zero here, because this is up and down, and this is diagonal. However, now we know that to think like a physicist, we should always be breaking things into components. Actually, this has one component that's northeast southwest, and one component that is southeast northwest. Um, so, what we should say is that only the component of the original light that is in the direction of the polarizer will get through. Um, so, we could break this into components here. We would break it into components like this. Oh, so it's not that the, the polarizer is broken into components. Oh, I guess you could do, I guess you could, uh, well, no, you wouldn't want to do that because the light that gets through has to be parallel to the polarizer. Oh, yeah. Right? So the light that gets through can't look like this. The light that gets through has to look what, like what the polarizer lets through. So here's the new light. This is the new light after it gets through the polarizer. You don't actually have to break this into components in real life, but you, uh, you could break those oscillations uh, up here. And if you did, you would get uh, something, something like this. I don't know. You could break uh, the oscillations up into uh, uh, a component that is uh, parallel to the polarizer and one that's perpendicular to the polarizer. So we can see that this definitely does have a component that is in the direction of the polarizer. So you're going to get, no matter, you're going to get the shape of the polarizer out. That's right. But, oh, so but it's just going to be like weaker? That's right, because 
the overall vector is the hypotenuse, and the component is a leg. Well, the legs are always smaller than the hypotenuse. So this is getting to that, that, those trick functions you were talking about. Those are figure, ways to figure out mathematically how much intensity you've lost because of the polarizer. Okay, so um, over here we are only going to get one leg of this triangle of oscillation, only the leg that's in the direction. So notice here, I've drawn this in the same direction of the polarizer, but I've drawn these arrows shorter than the original arrows to indicate that there's less electric, there's a smaller magnitude of oscillation now because we're only getting the component that is in the direction of the polarizer. There's no significance to how long these arrows are. These arrows are just supposed to show what direction the polarizer lives through, but there definitely is a significance to these arrows in the light. That shows what the magnitude, the, uh, the amplitude of the oscillations are. Um, so this now has a smaller amplitude. It's going from here to here rather than from here to here. 